Hi, my name is Maureen Wood, and today I'll be walking us through an overview of the Interactive Custom Report Writer. The Interactive Custom Report Writer provides companies with the tools that they need to create in-depth reports, all while interacting with the data that is in front of them. As users build reports, they can drag and drop information, sort and filter it, apply special formatting, and otherwise tailor it to their liking, similar to what you might be used to doing in a spreadsheet, but within Sage and Tag. So it uses the same login as your accounting and operations, and it's using your real-time Sage Intact data. This in turn will streamline the reporting process for you and your team and reduce the need for spreadsheets or other reporting tools. Now, there are some technical aspects to this report writer. However, keeping that in mind, we'll be walking through it in a couple of different quick scenarios from both a technical and non-technical perspective so that we can see how it can benefit everyone on your team. First, we're going to start with what's called a run-only licensed user. This is someone who is focused on running the reports as that non-technical person, someone like an accounting manager or an executive, but they still want to interact with the data in front of them to make important decisions. In our example today, we're going to start as an accounting manager, looking to understand more about the AP accounts, which vendor accounts are outstanding, which ones have the highest balances, and understand more about which ones we need to follow up on. And we're going to look at that report, make some tweaks to it, and then make our decisions from there. So now we'll be switching over to the report center. And here we are. So the report center is the central hub for all reports within Sage Intact. It includes reports with the standard financial report writer, custom reports, in the interactive reports as we see here. Specifically, we're looking at an AP vendor aging report that has both a summary view and detail view. We have the option to kind of filter out some data up front, but we're going to skip over that so we can do that while we're interacting with it. And we see on the left that we have the summary view so we can see the totals for each vendor account, understand how outstanding we are on those accounts. And then on the right here, we have the ability to look at the bill details for each vendor that we're looking at. So the first thing we're going to do is sort out the currencies here because we're only looking at our US accounts. At least that's what we want to start with here as the accounting manager. So by selecting the USD currency, it's already sorted out a lot of the other accounts we don't need to look at. Now we're wanting to understand which ones have the highest balances. So we're going to sort in the descending order here, and we see that the highest account balance that's outstanding is Emporis Property Management, which we're already uh, looking at here on the right. So if we have any questions about these specific bills, we do have a drill link into the bills here that we can go into, uh, continue to do some analysis there. We can also um, make some additional changes to the report as needed, let's say, if this were a longer list, maybe we would need to add in a uh, additional filter here, such as what's called a keep only or remove rule, which would keep only the accounts that meet a certain condition or remove accounts uh, that meet a certain condition. Uh, that way we can continue to sort through the information and uh, figure out which ones we need to follow up on. And from here, let's say our accounting manager is really happy with the format of the report that she's created. So she's going to export it to PDF maybe also export it to XML format to share with the report builder so that report builder can make those tweaks for her. And once that report is saved, um, she has the ability to email it out from Sage Intact, add it to her dashboard, and otherwise use it as you would one of the standard financial reports. And switching back here. So, we were able to just see how easy it was as a non-technical user to interact with the data in the AP aging report. We were able to sort and filter the data in front of us, uh, use drag and drop, analyze the accounts and bills to ultimately understand which accounts are having the most impact on our financials. And now we're going to switch over to the more technical user and focus on editing that same report we were just looking at, but now in the report builder. This technical user you could think of as an administrator, maybe a savvy accountant, or someone else on your team who wants to build out the reports and help out everyone else. 
And this type of user has some additional capabilities to really tweak and tailor the reports to their liking, changing formats, changing the type of data included in the reports and the report layout. In our specific example, we're going to add in a couple of fields to the report, so looking at additional data. Then we're going to add in a condition filter to look at accounts only over a certain amount, adjust the column formatting in the report, and then add a link to drill into records from the report as well. Okay, so switching back over here. A first thing to note here is that rather than go to the report center to run a report, we're going to look at the interactive custom reports on its own page where we can view both the out of the box reports that were provided by Sage Intact and also go into the ones that we've created here and continue to tweak them. Regarding the out of the box reports, the report library includes over 60 reports that really help to get you started, um, covers pretty much all operational areas, AP, AR, cash management, GL, and uh, projects, a few other areas as well. And what's great about these is you're able to edit them, make tweaks, and save it as a brand new report. That way you're not starting from scratch every time. But you do also have the capability to create a new report and build it from scratch as well. This report that we're looking at here is actually one that I took from an out-of-the-box report and just made little changes. And this is now my own tailored report. So what we're going to do here first is look for a couple of fields that we need to add into this report. So the first thing we're going to look at is the GL posting date. Let's say that is something that needs to be added into the report because maybe our build date sometimes differs from the GL posting date. So that is something that we like to keep track of in our reports here. And something else we like to keep track of is our department info. So we're going to pull in the department name, so this one right here. And as we see, we're doing a simple drag and drop searching in the reporting area um, within AP into, um, to pull in the information into the reports here. So we easily added the GL posting date and the department name. And the department name could be helpful, especially let's say for budgeting and planning by our departments. That way we can see what our spend is looking like uh, within each department here. And then after adding in those fields, let's say we're wanting to change the format a bit for this report. So what we're going to do is edit this table and we're going to look at one of those fields we just added. So let's say the department name. And we like that it's titled the department name, but we don't like that it has AP detail next to it because that's unnecessary. So we're going to capitalize name and take out that AP detail note. Okay, and now that's changed. And let's say if we also need to maybe make a change to table one here, and we see that total doesn't have any decimal places and currency designation. Any. So we're going to edit that and go down to total over here, column properties, change the data format to currency, specifically dollar sign with two decimal places. <clears throat> and now we see that was changed right away, making that super easy. And now let's say if we're wanting to, as a final step here, um, oh, actually no, two other things. We want to add in a condition to filter out accounts um, over or under a certain amount. So we're going to add that keep only rule that we were talking about earlier. So for the keep only rule, let's say we're wanting to keep only members that are over a certain amount here. So where the transaction amount or you can also do total. So let's say total is greater than, let's say 5,000. Keep only here. And note that we do have the option to add or remove records as well. So keep only where the totals are over 5,000. And there we go. We had some that were, I think, 3,300 um, and lower. So now we can only see the highest accounts um, outstanding here. And let's say as a final thing, 
we do have some drill links already added to the bill and the vendor name. But let's say we want to be able to drill into the vendor within the vendor ID as well. So we go back in to edit that table. And let's say we're gonna go to the vendor ID here, go back to column properties. And now we have the ability to add an interaction. The interaction we want is to drill into a record. So we can go in and say, maybe we want it to be view vendor as the text. Simply walk through a couple steps from here to say, yes, we want to be able to view that record. And I want it to connect to essentially a drill link for the vendor. It should be down here, vendor drill ID. And then we have a couple options here too to say whichever uh, situation you're running into, if the uh, field is fixed, hidden, or optional, you still want to be able to drill into the record under it. And now we're going to check this box so that that text doesn't display. Um, if you do want the text to display before you go into it, you can. In this case, we don't want that pop-up. And now we've said OK. And we'll see here in a second that the vendor ID is good to go. There we go. So now for wanting to go into the vendor record, it's just a matter of selecting it from the report, whether we're in this report builder view or running it as that end user, like what we did with the accounting manager before. And it'll now bring up that vendor record for us, as we uh, see here. There we go. Yep, the Lenovo vendor record. And what's cool about this is you don't have to just create links to records. It could be to other reports or any other information that would be helpful to connect to. And that is it. We're going to save as a new report here. Let's say if we were starting with um, a brand new uh, or starting with an out-of-the-box report and wanting to save it as a new one here, uh, that way we can save it with everything that we've uh, changed. And before leaving this report, something else to note is in addition to the formatting changes we made and the filtering and other things that we did, um, you can do a lot of other things within the interactive customer report writer as well. One is add in formulas to the columns. So let's say if we needed to add in a formula for you no know, total due, if that wasn't already on here, we're able to create the formula and make any changes to it. Um, we can also add in filters. And the filters you can think of as a way to filter out any unneeded data up front. And this is information you don't want the end user to even have to worry about. So in this case, we're filtering out any arm's length intercompany AP transactions and any AP payment transactions. And we're also only wanting to look at partially paid bills, posted and selected bills as well. And final thing here, we have some prompts. These are the filters we saw when we ran the report as the accounting manager. So we want to add additional prompts like the state of the bill, the date, like maybe uh, change it to be a date range. We have those options as well. And we can easily make those changes for the end users as needed from here. And with that, we'll switch back over. So as a technical user, we just went into the report builder to make some changes to that AP aging and bill detail report. We tailored the formatting a bit, added a drill link, at a uh, conditional rule to filter out some of the accounts. And then we talked about some ways that you can uh, personalize formulas, filters, and report prompts. And we also saw that we didn't have to start from scratch. We took an out-of-the-box report, personalized it, and then saved it as a brand new one. So as you can see, the Interactive Custom Report Writer is designed to benefit everyone on your team, whether you are technical or not so technical. And at the end of the day, since the Interactive Custom Report Writer is natively built into Sage Intact, you don't have to worry about a separate login or data permissions. It also gives you the ability to interact with the data and the reports while running and building them, gets you started with over 60 pre-built reports as a foundation, and most importantly, it provides you with the business intelligence that you're looking for by taking your Sage Intact data, and then from there, giving you the ability to structure it in the format that is most helpful to you and your team. Thank you so much for joining me for this overview of the Interactive Custom Report Writer. If you have any questions, I recommend reaching out to your Sage Intact account manager or representative to send you more information about how this can help everyone on your team achieve the insights you need.